Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new here, then please press that subscribe and like button. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build an app like Netflix, where users can go sign up for an account and then stream all the content that you have available. So I feel like this is gonna be a really exciting app to build and I hope you guys are excited for this too. By the end of this video, you're gonna have your own streaming platform where you can release the movies and have users sign up. It's gonna be really cool to build. I hope you guys are really excited. Let's get right into the video. All right, we're gonna open up Terminal. And I'll zoom in here and we're gonna type in Rails new Netflix Rails. Cause that's what I'm gonna call our app. I'm gonna add in the dash D option to specify the database as PostgreSQL. The next thing is dash C specify tailwind as the CSS framework and I'm going to press enter and that's going to create the rails app for us now I'm going to cd into the app and I'll just start off by uh, starting the server with bin slash dev which will allow us to go into the browser and go to localhost colon 3000 to open up the server. Now the first thing we see is uh, we could not find your database, but there's a button here where we can create database. So we're gonna click that. Now everything's set up, we see the Rails logo, which means we're ready to start developing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the user sign in. So to do that, it's really easy. I'll just go into the terminal and I'll add the device gem. So set up everything for device. Then we can run the generator for device, which is Rails G device colon install. We'll do that. It'll add a few things into our app, and then it gives us some next steps. It says we should set the root and also add these alerts in. So I can copy the alerts and let's open up Visual Studio Code. And let's open up this new folder that we generated. I'll go into the app folder, the views, the layouts, and the application file. And I'm going to add a new partial that we're going to render. So I'm going to say render layout slash alerts. And then it's going to look for a partial in the layouts folder. So we can create that by creating a folder underscore alerts dot html to erb. And add in the codes for the alerts. And then it also has the option to generate the views. But I'm going to use my gem that I created. So to do that, uh, it's called tailwind device you can do bundle add tailwind device this will generate the all the signing pages that the device installer would do but it'll style it with style it with tailwind so then we can do rails g tailwind device colon views and that will add all the device views and have that set up nice and pretty so then we can restart the server and if we go to user sign in oh we don't have we don't see it yet because uh, we need to do the Rails G device generator and then pass in the model that we want. So I just want to create a user model to start off. And we can migrate the database. Start it up with bin slash dev. And now we see the sign in page. So if we're going to sign up as a new user, it looks something like this. What we should do is I'll probably have just a basic home page for the root. So to do that, Let's go back into the console and I'll do a generator for a new controller and I'll call it the pages controller and I'll give it a home action. Now that we do that, we can just start the server again, but I'm going to go into the code and inside of the config folder, the routes.rb, uh, at the very top, you'll see uh, we got this new route for the pages home. But I just want to delete that and then go down to the bottom, uncomment this route. Uh, code and then change this to point to pages and the home action. Now, if we refresh, uh, you'll see that the main root is now this home page. So, if we want to change some of that text, we can go back into the code, go into the apps folder, the views, the pages, and the home file. And I'll just put the name of the app that we're building. So, we're gonna do Netflix, and this is stream best movies and TV shows available. 
right? Because that's kind of the point of Netflix. So refresh, we'll see this. I might want to center that. Just because I usually do. But I'll add a little bit more styling. Like, I don't want to use the, the basic padding that the Tailwind uh, extension uses. Like when I created the app with Rails new Dash C Tailwind, it adds this container in the in the layout. I guess it helps some people, but if you want to customize the page better, you just have to remove that. Now it'll allow us to do something where we target the whole page with the styling. Although you see that now our text gets pushed farther because there's no padding. We can easily add that back. So I'm just going to do flex call to center the items and I'll do some padding to shove it down. Uh, it probably needs more than that. Netflix to we can even do justify center. So it tries to actually center it and then we could do padding bottom 36 to kind of take it a little bit less off center. And we can also make the text bigger. Uh, I want to do a nice gradient for this one. So to do a gradient in Tailwind, I don't want to make this into a whole tutorial, but it's going to be. So you start off by making the text transparent, and then you add this option BG Clip Text, and then you can add any background, and it'll show up inside of the text. So you could do a URL of image, but for us, we're going to do a gradient. So then you do your gradient. For us, I'm going to do a gradient to the right from indigo to pink. Now, if we refresh, we'll see uh, we have this new styling, although indigo is too close to the blue. Maybe I'll darken it. Netflix 2.0. And then we can make the text underneath it just a lighter blue or indigo. Netflix 2.0. Stream the best shows and TVs of the TV shows available. And right underneath this, we could have that link to sign in. Which would go to new user session path. And we'll just do some really simple styling. Oh, beachy blue. That's already the color in the background. So maybe let's do pink. It's a really bright. Netflix and then I want to make it a little bit wider so it's not just a, a small sign in button I have to do text center and then I also want to do rounded full instead of so it actually shows up like a pill and then I want to do some space between this link so I'll just add margin to the uh, p tag okay so sign in I also think I'll just add the create account link here. Create account. And then we could do this styling a little bit different. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, let's make it so it's on one row by doing a div around it and give it a flat, uh, class of flex. And then we can do some gap. Item center. Let's see how that looks. Uh, <laughs> why is it create account like that? It's just sign up. Okay, sign in, sign up. Uh, I don't really love this. You know what we'll do is let's not make this one a button. Because usually when you do uh, one button, you just have the other one just stick out. That can kind of look nicer. So this one's a button, sign in. And this one would be like or create account. And then, you know what, this could actually be, this could look good if it was just stacked on top of each other now. Sign in or create account. But you know what, uh, let's go back. Let's keep our, our flex that we added, because this is fine too. So now we can sign in. Oh, one thing I didn't add to that gem is padding on the top. Oh no, I forgot that part. Uh, but that's nothing that we can't fix. Having top 36. I'll have to go and append this to the gym. It just kind of worked because of that container. 
Because if we did have that container and then I still had padding top, it would be like way down. So that's something I'm gonna have to think about. But you know what, then that way this is not bad. It's only, you add a little bit of custom padding and that's kind of good for us. So now I'll just go and create my new account. Just sign up and now that we're signed in, uh, we don't want to see the home screen anymore. We actually just want to go and see the streaming dashboard. Whoops. So to do that, let's go back into the code. I'll collapse these files real quick and then go into the config folder, the routes to RB. Inside of here, we have this uh, root right here setting the pages. But what we're going to do is we're going to add some code uh, that's included in the device gem, which will allow us to change the route if the user signed in so to do that you just do authenticated and then you put the name of the model so ours is user and then we put a new root which ours would go to I guess we can create a new controller called um, dashboard oh yeah and then you say as authenticated user root. There we go. We wrote this code. Now it should change the root when the user signed in, but we get this error, no dashboard controller. Uh, we're trying to go to the dashboard index. Actually, let's go dashboard show. And then I'm gonna uh, create this by hand. So the first thing we do is we go into the app folder, the controllers, and we create a new file called dashboard controller.rb and we make this inherit from the application controller and we just make that show action or we could have called it index then we go into the views create a matching dashboard folder and a show.html.erb template and inside of here is where we'll put all of the code uh, to show that user so I'll just put right up at the top your streaming dashboard. Well, that's not really what Netflix says, of course, because they're trying to make it more interesting. We'll change this up eventually. And you know what? I'm going to wrap this whole page in some quick styling. And I kind of want to, I can't resist to make it really bright. So let's do Indigo for the background. So obviously, your site doesn't have to be so colorful unless you want it to be. All right, and then I'm gonna start adding stuff in. So the streaming dashboard, I wanna kind of style that better. So I'm just gonna do another div where I have our second container. I'm gonna add a max width and then some margin, which you'll see that kind of just positions it to the side. And then we can do a margin top. Oh, but if we do margin top, it also kind of breaks the background. So instead of that, let's do padding top, but on the outer div with the background color. So then it just kind of pushes that text down. And then we can make it stand off the sides by doing PX, PX8. And then just figure that out for mobile later. So now we have this your streaming dashboard. And right here, we're going to show like featured shows, movies, all that stuff. So let's go and create those models real quick. Go in the terminal and let's do Rails G scaffold movie. A movie is gonna have a title, and then we're gonna do a description of rich text. And there is a lot more attributes that a movie would have in the real Netflix app. Like it stores all of the authors and the cast members, and then there's also different like tags and genres and all these things, but to keep this simple, we're just gonna do a description or we can do a short little summary. And then, of course, in a real world app, you would add other fields and you might associate those with models and, and things like that. But for us, let's keep it simple. Let's do Rosie Scaffold, movie title, description, run that scaffold. Then let's migrate. Oh, and I forgot to add the, uh, the actual file in there, but that's fine, we can do this after. But we are going to use action text and active storage to install those. We need to run a command, Rails action text colon install. 
then we can run rails db migrate migrate the database and now we're good to go we can restart the server and we can go to slash movies slash new and we'll see that we have the form to create this new movie so let's say i don't really know what movie we're going to post but i want to add the file because i forgot that part so to add the file we can go into the movies folder go to the underscore form partial and we just need to add another one of another set of these so i'll just copy it to make it easy but we're gonna have to replace a lot of this stuff so instead of label we're gonna say uh let's just call it video let's call it video file and instead of rich text area it's a file field a video file and then that's that's it that's all we have to do for the view uh, the next thing that we could do is in the controller so you have to go to pages controller or not page controller we have to go to movies controller go all the way down to the bottom to the movie params method and we have to permit that video file uh, field in the movie params which is going to allow it to be saved on the model but we don't have a reference in the model so that's the last step we go to the models folder the movie.rb and we say has one attachment video file or is it has one attached i think it has one attached okay let's try so avengers that's the only movie i'm thinking of right now this is a good movie i don't actually have the video because that would be illegal right so i do have some videos that from my channel that i'll put just as the filler content so we're going to create the movie uh, it's taking a while. <laughs> oh, it looks like it went. It's, it might just be uploading or something. I don't know why uploading a file locally would take so long. But I think that worked. We can go to slash movies and see all of the movies. Okay, so we have Avengers 2. And we know this is a good movie. So now if we want to go and display this back on the streaming dashboard... Let's go to that, so if you need to see where that is on the side, you go to app, views, dashboard, show page. And now right in here, underneath this text, uh, we can just, well, we can even change this text to new movies. And then let's iterate over this movies um, instance variable, which we don't have yet. We can render a movie partial and we'll pass in a movie although we could do it like this or we could say we could do another way um i'll show you how we can simplify that we could also just say render partial so you have to add partial as the key that's important for this way to work and then you say movie and you pass it a collection so this is simpler one line you just have to remember to add the key for partial and collection. Oh, whoops. And then we can create a new file right here. Underscore movie.html.erb. And we'll add in the code for this movie. Right now, let's just display the name of it. But we don't have the this instant variable at movies defined yet. So to define this, we have to do it in the controller. So if we go back into the controllers in the dashboard controller inside of the show method we can set movies to something which we'll just set it to movie to all we'll go refresh oh it doesn't have a name right we call it title so let's go back into that partial so dashboard underscore movie partial uh i meant to say movie dot title and we'll see we have that movie there and i probably want to add a I want to make this like a card because that's usually how Netflix displays their stuff. So to make a card styling, we have to first go back to the, the outside, so the regular show page, and we have to wrap this render in a div that'll style this to be like cards. So for that, we can do grid. So we can say grid, grid calls, let's do four, and let's do a gap of eight. So once we wrap it like this, it'll already be in a grid layout perfect for cards but then we can add some more styling inside the partial itself 
we have the movie title. We can also do the movie dot description. And then on the outer div, it just gives it some sort of height. Let's say width full. And we can make the background stand out. And then we can style uh, the title and description here. So I'm wrapping it in a span. Just another random HTML element that I use. I'm going to add some margin on this. We're rendering. So right on the container with the grid, I'm going to add some margin just to push it off from the new movies. But then we see we have Avengers 2. This is a good movie. We got some rounded. And then what I really want to do is I want to grab the preview from the image. And if you remember, if you watched the YouTube episode, we did that. I'm actually going to use that to reference for this episode. Where is it? No. Where did the app go? I think we just have too much YouTube stuff. Okay. So YouTube Rails. Right here, we did this post dot preview, and we did the processed URL. Oh, whoops. <laughs> so it would be the movie dot video file, and then we do dot preview resize the limit processed URL, which this should work for us. Oh, and then there's this thing. Uh, can't set so there's another part you have to add inside of the controller active storage set current so we have to go into the dashboard controller and add this code up here which I guess sets the URL for active storage and then now you get this to show up correctly so we get the little preview and then I want to turn this whole thing into a link so what we can do is around the movie partial, just outside of here, we can say link to movie and then say do, wrap all the code and then add an end. And now when you click on it, it actually goes to the page. And then in, on this page, uh, if we go to that page, which to get there, you go to the views folder, the movies folder and the show page. This is where we're rendering the movie. So the movie right now is just all of like this type of stuff, the title description. So we can leave that and why don't, right on top of that, let's do a video tag for the movie.video file. And we'll say controls true. And we can also say autoplay true. So it'll start playing when you get to this page because that's how YouTube works too. And for that to work, we also need to say muted true. Uh, Cause some browsers, they don't let you play the video unless it's muted. So now when you when you see the movie, you click on it, you get there and it just automatically starts playing. And then see at the bottom, there's, the, there's a few links we want to remove for a user because a user shouldn't see this. Probably only admin should see these links, right? Edit this movie, destroy this movie. We definitely don't want just any guy to see that. So... Well, let's just get to that point. So let's get to authorization. That's a big part in these apps. So we also don't want a user to be able to go to movies new and create new movies or edit a movie. We only want them to view it. So to set up that, uh, we can just go into the console and we're going to create a new device model. So we'll do Rails G device admin. Create that table, migrate the database, start the server again, and then it's actually easy enough to authorize this. So in the view for those links, we'll say if current admin, then we show the edit and destroy links. So this guy right here, he's just a user, he's not an admin, so he won't be able to see this. I don't know why it's taking so long when I reload. What's going on here?
It's almost like trying to actually run a server or something. I don't know if my computer just messed up. Let's restart. So we're on new movies. We click on new movies. And perfect, we don't see the links. But now let's say if we were trying to be smart and hack it, and just put slash edit in the URL, we still can see the page to edit. So let's lock down this route. So to do that, we can go into the controllers and the movies controller. And we'll put a before action at the top. We'll say authenticate. Authenticate. <laughs> Why am I spelling this wrong? Authenticate admin. Okay. Accept. Index. And show. Those are the only two routes that we want to allow. Although, actually, we don't want to show the index either. So go back. Only accept show. Because we want them to be able to go to the show page. That's the one page that we've locked down that we've made sure they can't look at the links to edit it or anything like that. Uh, they don't need to see the movie's index either because that's just the index maybe for admins. But they can see the dashboard. That's where we've created the dashboard. Oh, so I just went down to mobile and you see this is all messed up, the card. Because uh, we need to make that responsive. So if you go back to the dashboard show page, uh, right here we're doing grid and then grid calls. See, it's still trying to do four columns on mobile, but in, real, in reality, we probably only want to have one column here. So we can add a breakpoint, say medium colon, and now it's only going to apply when you get to a medium screen. Which we, could, we could even change this a little bit more. Oh, one thing I see is, look at this, when the, when the card is kind of wider, it breaks the image. So let's try to do some styling to that image back in the movie. Because right here we're telling it to resize to fit 500. That's way too big for one. Let's refresh. For this size of card, I don't think we need 500. We could probably do 300. And then I just want to make it fit uh, whatever. Because this is just the image file itself, right? But we can still add CSS to give it a fit height and width, and then just say object cover. So we're resizing it, but then also we're making it fit. So see, if, we, if it ever becomes like something like this, which we probably wouldn't want it to be like that, but this is how it works. Uh, so yeah, that looks good to me. We have it a little bit more responsive. And if we click here, we can go view, and then we can't go and actually do that unless you're admin, which admin is going to sign in. But here we have an option to create a new admin, which we definitely don't want a user to be able to do that. We probably want admin to only be created either by admin or by someone in the console. So that's pretty easy with device. We just need to open up the code, go to the admin folder and delete the registerable option from these keys. So delete registerable. Now if some guy goes to admins, sign up, there's no route. If he goes to admin sign in, then he can go and sign in. There's even a forget your password link, but he's not going to need that because he doesn't have the admin email anyways. So now if we're going to create an admin account, we have to do it from uh, the console. So we'd go into the console by typing rail C, and then we type admin.create, we give them an email test.admin.com and then we'll give it a password something really safe just like that we have our admin account we can restart the server and we'll go to test.admin.com as the email type in our password log in and boom uh, we see that so now we should be able to do everything that a user can do now we actually have to, we are allowed to edit it and destroy it and all that stuff. And also create the new, so if we want to add our second movie, maybe we also want to have Avengers 1. Right, I'll just grab another video file. These video files are pretty long, 
So that might be what's taking a long time uh, with Rails. Although I'm not sure why. Because locally you'd think that the file would instantly store. So that's saved. Now we have our Avengers 1. Oh, one thing. Look at the Back to Movies button. This actually goes to the Movies page. But rather we want that to go to the dashboard. So let's go to the movies show page and right where it says back to movies, let's change this to the dashboard path because the user is not able to go to the, to the movies index anyways. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why my Rails app is glitching. This is pretty strange. I'm going to have to look into this. I think it's something with the with those thumbnails. Maybe because I'm doing it inside the view. Yeah, that's definitely because the first time it happens, it, or the first time it loads the page, it would try to create the thumbnail, which takes a second. Uh, we can try to fix that probably in another episode because I don't really know where to start right now. Oh, it doesn't know about dashboard path. That probably should have just been root path. So back to movies goes back here. Perfect. And we can go watch our movies. And the next part would really be TV shows. But I feel like we've already covered so much that we might handle that in the next episode. But I hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, you learned something about how Rails works and how to build an app like this. Another thing that you would definitely want to do though is add uh, payments with Stripe. I actually have another video on my channel, how to set up Stripe payments in your Rails app. So you can watch that, but I'll probably get to that in also like the next episode. We'll do a two-in-one where we add payments and then we also add TV shows, or we might have two separate episodes. Let me know what you think. And like always, if you enjoyed this video, please press that like button, subscribe down to the channel because it helps a lot and it motivates me to create these new videos. But I'm already really motivated and I'm going to be creating a lot of new content.